Professor Zahn, and for you, you gave the start for the debate by pointing to the, uh, uh, the questions you raised and what answers to. So let's open it to the floor. Are there any comments on the questions raised by Professor Zahn? I actually understood that it was a, a whole research project you were doing with this. Did you have people working on it? Do you have a team? Do you spend hours? Mm -hmm. Do you have the work? No, I don't have a team. I have two PSE students who are interested in this topic. And uh, uh, whenever we find time, we work on it. We've been working on this from April already, but it, it, because we don't have this much money, it goes slowly, and they have their PSEs to finish. So basically, that has the priority now. But <coughs> the fact that I couldn't apply for money in England is a nice Sorry, the fact that I could to apply for money in England also gave it another. Um, input and also the fact that I would be talking about it here forced me again to work on it. So I, it's bits and pieces that together hopefully make some sense at some point. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, I have a, um, a question um, because it seems that you approach the videos as a platform for alternative voices more or less. That's, you consider it as a more or less positive uh, platform, which I uh, totally agree with. That. But if you look at it from another perspective, then you see that both in the, uh, well at least in my opinion, both in the uh, public debate as well as in the videos, the categories of, of Muslim and non-Muslim or Islam or non-Islam are being reinforced in both of the, so there is not so much a difference, but also a um, similarity, and um, probably this was not Wilders, his intention in the first place, but I, I suppose that he's really glad with this, because this is what he probably wants, this, this dichotomy mm -hmm. to reinforce this, and um, even when people argue in the videos that Islam uh, is uh, not tied to all those stereotypes, the same person really makes this dichotomy and reinforces this. And yeah, considering the fact that with the label Muslim and the label non-Muslim all kinds of stereotypes are attached, I'm not so sure if it's only a platform for um, yeah, alternative voices or maybe just, well it is in a way of course, but also for reinforcing the, the, the dominant discourse. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um... And I am um, digging my memory to think of examples in which that doesn't happen, this, this performance of a straightforward religious identity. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff about Hindu the Hindus. Uh, yeah. yeah. And there's, there's a couple of people that basically say, I am not religious. But they, most of them, if I, my first hunch would be that most of them really define themselves in, the, in religious terms and do nothing to undermine these categories. I think you're right there. Uh, but I will, that it's, a, it's a good point. I will, um, and, and I'm not sure whether that doesn't... Because you're setting up another dichotomy yourself, aren't you? Between alternative voices that then would be undermining these categories and mainstream voices that would um, share the yeah. categories. So, so I'm not sure whether that is in the end very helpful. Um, mm -hmm. But that, that's yeah. not a discussion. Nice. Well, it's interesting to see what the motives are for some, because that's what you are going to research mm -hmm. in the future, as, uh, the motives for uploading those pictures, or, or even maybe for constructing those, pic those, those videos, because the person who um, um, photographs his dog might be uh, giving really an, uh, totally on, just to say, uh, well, let's not talk about this dichotomy, but let's just uh, uh, make it ridiculous. Yeah. And that's actually a really an alternative voice in a way that does not reinforce his dichotomy. Yeah. But I'm not sure what's the motive of this person who photographs his dog. But, um, no, I think or other ki yeah. kinds of things like no, that. that's true, that's true. We'll include the man with the dog in the next time. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and it shows that, that especially, especially with this kind of research, you need to ask people why they did it, because you're reading so much into it. Um, which may not be valid at all. And so f with dog, yeah, I have actually, it really doesn't make sense at all. And there are a couple of other videos that have, what's 
the idea. And so much more than with traditional media output, this is very, very puzzling what you get here. And um, uh, the ones, of course, in making the categories and going from these 6,000 videos to a typology, the first things that you do are the things that you can make sense of. That's why I find this Bible uh, example so interesting, because you can make very easy sense of that. Um, but there's a, a, a lot of other ones that I seem to include here, of course, in, uh, to sort of maintain the academic illusion um, that, um, that don't make sense at all.
Qigong on, you know, who has the mm -hmm. most interesting, more fr frightening uh, YouTube um, clip. So there I can clearly see some sort of, you know, YouTube as a, as a, as a, as a theater of expression, as a place where, where, where youth can sort of express themselves and can express their mm -hmm. kind of counter voices and counter discourses. Um, so that, that sort of makes sense as, a, as, a, as an expression mm -hmm. for a specific group uh, trying to, to do something. Um, but to see all these different people with all their and, and, and uh, you know the guy with the dog who just you know the dog could just be Fitna called Fitna. You know? I've got a I, that's a kind of dog name. So <laughs> <laughs> like that is another. Yeah, and the dog is Kika. So there, there's it's such true. a multitude of, of possible yeah. motives. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm trying to go to the cats. That mm -hmm. in such a huge world of freaky and interesting and stupid and yeah. all these Absolutely. different people that, yeah. that want to do stuff on YouTube. Yeah. That, um, yeah. Yeah, now the question is, what is it that these YouTube videos represent? What, in what context are they meaningful? And what do we want to know about it? Yeah, I think I answered that one earlier. But, um, at least I know what I want to know about yeah. it. But the question is, what is it? Is it a video sphere in the sense that we think about the public sphere? If you start thinking about the public sphere, then you would also realize that that doesn't exist in any right. way. It's a construction. Right. It's an academic construction. It's a journalistic construction. Yeah. If you think about it, you would get the same kind of trouble that you are now raising with talking about YouTube. Yeah. What is interesting, though, is that young people in particular Although they use the internet and all other media for entertainment purposes for 95%, 99% it's always young people that find ways within entertainment to express their social, political, in this case, religious concerns. Now YouTube is an example of that, but there's other examples as well, but in particular games, you can make movies within the game with your game characters. Uh, and some young people are using are, are making films about politics. And these, these movie games are called machinimas. Um, cinema with a machine, or something, something yeah. kind of abbreviation of that. And one of the most famous machinimas in political cultural studies is one made by a French guy about the Paris riots mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, uh, which was uploaded 400,000 times within a day. Yeah. And so, and with that, we also don't know what it means and how meaningful it is, but it is something, and um, I'm trying to find ways into that. And maybe this is a dead end in the end. No, 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 it's very, it's not, it's very... Yeah, but the question is, what does it represent? And the question, of course, is also, YouTube has some interesting data about that, of course, who, how many people are watching this, Absolutely. and how many people are downloading this, yes. and uh, oh, yes. what kind of discussion do you get? And, and unfortunately, most of the discussions Basis of the videos are the kind of hate mails that you would expect in this. In this uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Does the, the, the dealers can, I mean, do they have a web manager? Do they check in with these? Do they, is it any response? Do they not care? And, uh, what, is, if I were you know, the builders, I would check all of this, like, like it does, I suppose, newspaper reviews. Is this not part of? Well, I don't know. Well, they know better just the politics. In Given the amateurism with which the original Fitna movie was made, and the problems he had with getting it published or distributed to begin with, I, I'm very. I don't think he has a very professional group of media people behind him. Not sure. And so he's, he is a very isolated person, and that also translating translating into the amount of resources he can use to, to analyze it. So you could use that as an extra argument that his idea of starting a public debate, in fact, misfires over and over again, because if this is potentially a public debate, he's not even remotely following it. So but, but, it was a provocation rather than yeah. an instigation of the debate. Yeah. But is he instigating a public debate? Well, he did, get a, he did get a public debate, but not about his own. He got a the public debate about himself, about the danger of this film for Dutch society, within Dutch society and, and in relation to the outside world, and a public debate about what the Americans would call the First Amendment, the freedom of uh, but, speech. But, but, That's the debate he uh, got, but not about Islam. But I would give him too much credit if, if we 
saying that he instigates a public debate, because he didn't. In my view, it's not a debate. That's, oh. It's shouting. Oh, it's shouting. That's, okay. Unless that's you want to do yeah. that as a debate. But shouting is a... Yes, but that, that is, yes. If, yeah, you could say that. That's shouting. That's the, yeah. There's another issue which struck me in, in, in your lecture is that you, you seem to distinguish the visual sphere or the new video sphere from the public sphere. Uh -huh. But isn't this the public sphere? Well, so should we go? Should we not make that step and say, well, the public sphere is not only any more institutionalized political sphere yeah. that we used to yeah. display that in, in the newspaper and the public? Yes, that is that is a very valid point, and it's a big discussion, of course, of what the public sphere is and can be at this moment. Um, say, this is who I am, and I don't care what you think, but this is who I am, and you see that in forums. Uh, where people just say, uh, well, I'm against the war in Iraq and I don't, I don't care what you think about it, or the other way around. And you see it in these films, where people are really much more performing than debating, I would say. And that, that is, it's, it's interesting that you, you really need to think about what a public sphere in the Abbasian sense, where people need to discuss the affairs of society and the state, what that means. And, and it's, that's... Um, I don't think, yeah, I'm not, I haven't found an answer yet. So sometimes I'm really for opening up the concept to everything that's public, and sometimes I think, well, that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure where we are there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was puzzled. I was puzzled by the difference between the public sphere and the video sphere as well. Um, well, I'm a literary historian, so I, I'm not a specialist, so I was a bit hesitant. Um, I, um, was a bit reluctant to react, but um, isn't it um, maybe uh, interesting to <coughs> um, compare the YouTube films uh, with um, official, the official public sphere in the um, programs like the Wille of the or mm -hmm. Opal uh, and with Wittemong, because they, they also um, make use of the YouTube uh, movies a lot, yeah, and, and, and based on what selection, maybe it makes you closer to the question, well, uh, what is the video sphere and the public sphere? Well, maybe it can be interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Because I, I think the quality aspect uh, also um, uh, plays a, an important role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is you know, really a... Yeah, I, I have an indeed. It's a, I haven't been very clear about all of this. That's true. Um, the thing with Infotainment, like the real time or, or or the other programs that are that are there. Um, what else is there? It wasn't news before that. Um, yeah, this was the, the what's the English word? Have I got news for you? Have I got news for you? Yeah. Programs like that, um, which use a lot of popular popular culture as well. What they have in common with traditional newspapers or news journalism is that they have this production routine as well, especially if it's daily programs, then you're completely tied to the, um, the presence of official sources, people that can come to you and talk to you, people that are verbal um, and eloquent. Um, and so the whole organizational requirements of making these kinds of daily or weekly programs, whether they're serious or popular or funny or stupid or uh, high quality or whatever, but they are all constrained within these organizational requirements. And I think in discussing that this now, I realize that what makes YouTube different is that it, it escapes from these requirements because people can put it up there whenever they want, they can make it whenever they want, they can make it how they want it. And in that sense, it's a much more open sphere than uh, what I would call than the official public sphere is how you would define it at the moment. So, but that, that was a very helpful discussion, actually. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, but, oh, yeah. No, we're just brainstorming, right? So, yeah. Also, also the, maybe the difference, indeed, is that in, in indeed, these programs, the, the official public debate programs that you just mentioned, there's always the setup that there has to be argumentation. People discuss things and have different points of view, mm -hmm. so there's always action reaction. And there's always a group of people, also very often an audience, that sometimes can sort of step in and ask questions 
bark claw or say blue or something. But there's there's action reaction. People react to each other. Whereas of course in the in the, in the YouTube sort of sphere, um, people sit behind their little computers, do their own individualized thing, uh, upload it, and then there's you know it, it's a statement. It's just yeah. out there, yeah. and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily ask for interaction in that, in that way. So it, well, what you say is that there is no clear causal connection between video expressions. Yeah, well, in that sense, it's, it's, it's not a debate. You know, if you, if you, of course, we have to talk about definitions, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what you're looking for. Can we, can we call, can we include YouTube into what we call the public sphere, the public debate? Um, what, how do we define public debate? It's well, you know, debate you is about, you know, doing yeah. what we're doing, so yeah. exchanging and arguing, yeah. yeah. and it's really a dialogue, I think. Dialogue, that's the word I'm looking for. Since we're not disagreeing, that's... Uh, yeah, dialogue, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I disagree. No. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, dialogue. Yeah. Um, the, but the fact that the, the public sphere is constituted by debate may also be one of the reasons why it's excluding particular yeah. groups of people, styles of, of showing what you are, are performing your political politics that, that if you're not really we all know the situation where we're in a debate and people are talking in a way that you just don't get access to it and that you still want to say listen but I do not agree yes. and um, um, and then you can't find the words or you can't find the entrance and maybe that is what YouTube also is for all these people that yeah. don't find access to the debate. All these people that later die in bed and this is what I want. Yeah. Well yeah. and I think well, sorry this is like, the sorry videos are, are a perfect example of that because you see people very uncomfortable but really wanting to say, I'm sorry, I don't agree with this. Yeah. Not much more than that because they put on a wig and uh, uh, they, they jump and uh, do silly things in front of the camera. But the only thing, so, I mean, so that, absolutely the only thing they want to say is, I'm sorry, I don't want this either, but I can't do anything to it. And nobody will ever listen to them anyway in what kind of official context. So that, that, that is. But if we then want to stick to keeping the public sphere and private sphere kind of separate, could you argue then that the public sphere is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller uh, and yeah. less relevant because yeah. it is overshadowed by this yeah. huge yeah. private sphere which we cannot control? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Did you say no? Or yes? No, yes, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> If you would use the concept of public sphere in the in the limited sense, in, in the classic sense of, of politicians and journalists and, and reasonable people who say yes. Um, and it has never been anything else, I think. But with the current explosion of all kinds of media and ways for people to express themselves, it becomes probably more visible that it's very much an elite thing or a limited thing. And is that bad? Yeah, but that, that really depends on my mood, whether it's bad or not. <laughs> but it's, you could also call it sort of the privatization of the public sphere. Yeah. And uh, the acknowledgement that debate is not the only relevant mode of communicating in the yeah. public sphere. And if you, would, if you would connect that to the, 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 the traditional politics, for instance, then you would say what we see much more are demonstrations. Right. And the, 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 the traditional demonstrations we had on the streets, which we still have, which is not interested in communicating or discussing or whatever, right. simply saying I don't agree or I do agree or I want this or whatever. Um, and so this, these kind of things would be the visual uh, variety of the demonstration. Yeah. And, yeah. Maybe instead of seeing where asking whether that's good or bad, is why, why do you see that? I mean, that's an awful question. Why do we see this? Yeah, why, why does it need to, sort of, to, to not interact, but to perform? You know, to just perform your, your yeah, just make statements. But well, that's a bit too difficult question. Because it's possible, maybe? Well, that would be one of the answers, because it's possible. Like, it's when, we, when I was young, I'd say 20, <laughs> it's like if you look at the YouTube videos, yeah. 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 Then I had no way of expressing myself but to go out to the Vondelbar and stand on the box 
or make a movie, no way I have to produce or be shown. So it wasn't possible for me as a private person to express my ideas except in the public debate. Having to uh, submit. submit to the rules of the public. Yes. Whereas now, you don't have to, you can make your own rules. Mm. Because it's possible. Yeah. So but yeah, that's 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 one of the reasons. And the other one could be, yeah, that it could be, you could think of all the classic uh, complaints about modern society and fragmentation and whatever to answer your question. Yeah. Maybe the cultural pessimist view is that people are not recognized by their social surroundings and their families anymore, so they are going to look for recognition on YouTube or whatever internet space or. Mm -hmm. no, but that would be a bit silly, kind of. But I'm pretty sure there, is, there, there are these kinds of explanations around. Yeah. So. Actually, I have, I have final questions. Okay, final question. Well, at least it's final, it depends on how long I'm going to play. Yeah, final words. Thanks a lot. What I find striking with YouTube, but also with all the web blogs and so on, is the anonymity. Mm -hmm. But not many people dare to show their real self, but hide, be hide behind either cookie anonymity mm -hmm. or some kind of pseudonym. Uh, mm -hmm. You see, on one of the videos, yeah, this one is wait, quite you can't yeah. see who yeah. actually are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is that? Why do, is this anonymity there? It's not a general thing, this anonymity. And so, one of the reasons that you find uh, the video here made anonymous is because it's such a heated debate and people are afraid to put this, uh, themselves onto YouTube with a pro or anti-Islam statement. So that might be particular to this case. Um, it's actually what most internet research demonstrates is that anonymity is relatively rare and that people connect their online and offline selves uh, and especially in blogs when they talk about their cats uh, and, and we, we, did, we did a lot of research about blogs and the amount of private information and everyday stuff that is on these blogs is impressive. Um, so, so I guess anonymity varies with context, but in, if you could say there's a, general, there's a general phenomenon, then it would be that people use the internet and blogs and whatever to perform themselves, their selves in a wider public arena and therefore they can't be anonymous because they really want to show themselves and but they want to be acknowledged as individual people. When it comes to criticizing things or defending things, mm -hmm. like you see with Fitna, but all other kinds of, of uh, political activities or developments, or whatever, mm -hmm. it seems to be a difference. No, you you refer to Geen Stel, for example? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Those kind of blogs where you can just basically shout. Yeah. To others, yeah. without there being a dialogue or a debate, yeah. it's all, almost always in the names or using yeah. students. Yeah. That's why I don't know. That's a clear distinction with public debate, where yeah. you are not in the news because uh -huh. you have to kind of yeah. take responsibility for your work. Yeah, and there was an interesting article in Trouw of two weeks ago, I think, about that this shouting thing and uh, this flaming style of train style and those kind of websites. Mm -hmm. Particularly Dutch, yeah. at least I couldn't find it anywhere else in the world. I'm a bit hesitant about that, but it could be yeah, that's that's true. That's, uh, that's a Dutch thing. Yeah. That, that is a Dutch thing. <laughs> it raises a whole other <laughs> sense of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is the, yeah. The anonymity, that's an interesting one. Are there any other comments or questions? Thank you again. Yeah, and thank you very much. It's been very helpful for my... Uh, Keep us close for me. Yes, I will. Progress, <laughs> of course.